Moving on to the next example, we have to find the slope of the tangent for f of x equals 4 over x plus 2 at an x value of negative 1. So to give you a little visual before we uh, start the algebra part of this example, I drew out the graph of 4 over x plus 2. It's just a rational function with a vertical asymptote at an x value of negative 2. And we have to find the slope of the tangent at an x value of negative 1. So at this point on the function, we have to find the slope of the tangent. So the tangent is this red line, the line that touches this function only at an x value of negative 1. So we got to find the slope of that red line in this question. And as I did in the previous example, I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. So the first way is I'm going to find the specific slope of this function at an x value of negative 1, the specific slope of the tangent. And to do that, I'm going to use the slope of the tangent formula, but I'm going to plug in negative 1 for the a value. So we got f of negative 1 plus h minus f of negative 1 all over h. Now f of negative 1 plus h simplifies to 4 over 1 plus h with this function, and I showed that here. So if f of x is equal to 4 over x plus 2, that means f of negative 1 plus h, we would plug in negative 1 plus h for that x value. So I did that here in brackets. And then the negative 1 plus 2, that simplifies to 1. And then we're just left with that plus h as well in the denominator. So f of negative 1 plus h is 4 over 1 plus h. And then f of negative 1, if we plug in negative 1 for the x value, in the denominator we would have negative 1 plus 2, which is just 1. And then 4 divided by 1 is just 4. And then this is still all over h. Now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to simplify the numerator and create one fraction. So this 4 here we can put over 1. So then the next step is we have to get a common denominator between these two fractions and the common denominator would be 1 plus h. So we have to multiply both the denominator and the numerator by 1 plus h. And now we can subtract these fractions. We can put them as 1. So the 1 plus h would be in the denominator. And then we would have 4 minus 4 bracket 1 plus h. And then this is still all over h. But at this point, since we're dividing by h, this is like dividing by h over 1. I would recommend that instead of writing that, you just write multiplying it by 1 over h. Remember, because if you're dividing by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying it by its reciprocal. So we just took that h over 1 and turned it into 1 over h, and now we are multiplying it. And now the algebra is going to be a lot easier to see. And then simplifying that numerator, so we'd have 4 minus 4, those would cancel out to 0, and then we'd have minus 4h left in the numerator. That's still all over 1 plus h, and we're multiplying it by 1 over h. And now notice how these h's cancel out. <coughs> and once they cancel out, we can now plug in 0 for h, because when we plug in 0, if we were to plug in 0 for h at this step, 1 over 0 would be undefined, so we still want to try to cancel out that h value in the denominator as always. So we cancel out the h value, we're left with negative 4 over 1 plus h, and now when we plug in 0 for h, we would just be left with negative 4. So that there represents the slope of the tangent for this function at an x value of negative 1. So negative 4 is the slope of that red line. Now, as I did in the previous example, I'm going to find it this second way, and I'm going to find the general slope of the tangent for this function at an x value of a. And to do that, I'm still going to use the same slope formula. However, instead of plugging in specific value for a of negative 1, I'm just going to keep that value of a general. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this with this function, simplify it, and then at the end we'll have a general slope of a tangent formula for this function, and then we can plug in an a value of negative 1, because that's what we're looking for in the question. So f of a plus h, if we plug in a plus h for the x value in this function, we would have 4 over a plus h plus 2. And then if we plug in a for the x value in this function, we would have 4 over a plus 2. 
Now, all of this is still being divided by this h, but instead of dividing it by h, I'm just going to take this expression and multiply it by 1 over h at this step. So similarly, what we did here, instead of dividing by h, we're just multiplying it by 1 over h is the same thing, and it's going to save us space on the whiteboard. Now, if you do decide to put this uh, 1 over h at this step, make sure that you're taking that full expression and putting it in brackets because we're dividing that whole numerator by h. So that whole numerator is represented by that bracket. So make sure you're putting those brackets if you're putting that 1 over h in this step. And now to simplify this bracket, we have to get a common denominator. And the common denominator between these two expressions would just be them multiplied. Now, since we're multiplying this denominator by a plus 2, we have to multiply the numerator by a plus 2 as well. Then we have this minus 4. And since we multiply this denominator by a plus h plus 2, we also have to multiply that numerator by a plus h plus 2. And now notice how we have it in a single fraction. And now when we simplify that numerator, when we distribute the 4 in the first bracket and then the negative 4 in the second bracket, it would just simplify to negative 4h. The denominator stays the same and then we're still multiplying it by that 1 over h. But now notice how the h's cancel out. And then after the h's cancel out, we're just left with the limit as h goes to 0 of negative 4 over a plus h plus 2 times a plus 2. And now, since we cancel out that h in the denominator, we can plug in 0 for h. So this h, which is the only h left in the whole expression, would go to 0. And we would be left with negative 4 over a plus 2 times a plus 2, which just gives us a plus 2 squared. So that there represents our general formula for the slope of the tangent at any x value a for this function. And since this question wants us to find it at a specific x value of negative 1, we can just plug in negative 1 for a, and if we do that, we would get a slope of negative 4, which is what we got here as well. But notice how versatile and nice this equation is to have. Because let's say that this question gave you this function and they said that they wanted the slope of the tangent at an x value of negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So let's say they wanted it at 4 x values. Well, it would be a lot of work to do it this way because you'd have to do this algebra four different times for four different a values, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. However, with this way, you can just get this general formula here. And then, if they want it at multiple x values, you can just plug in those x values for the a values and get the slope right away. So this is a good way to do it. But uh, your textbook in this chapter is mostly going to show it this way. But uh, either way works. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.